Previously on They See Me Rolling. All goblins need to be executed. I somehow don't think these spider worshippers are actually history yet. Our mission was to scout out the area and report back. Suddenly, Skunk is now a human male. (laughs) Yes, we're looking for (laughs) Captain Gilbert. I saw him leave back to the outpost this morning. You arrive at the camp. You do see a lady there. You recognize the lady as Courtney. You see a very important looking man. In fact, you recognize him as the man who is shouting out the orders to kill all the goblins. I say, silence! And it's a command. I can cast suggestion and suggest that he just come with us. Do you see one of the soldiers? Captain, wh- wh- where are you going? I look at this man and I say, excuse me, sir. Have you ever heard of a show called A Very Full House? Did you know that in the third, third episode of season five, when Jeffrey bakes the uh, too much spaghetti Meanwhile, that what they and, used was not uh, in fact spaghetti but was away. a mixture of To recap real quickly, Jelly is reading from her book to distract the uh, guards as Cohen and Skunk are sneaking out with the captain. There is something you guys didn't realize. One, the command to silence only lasted one turn. Yeah, that's correct. Oh. And the captain was ordered to follow Jelly, not you guys. Oh. Oh, God. Damn it. So the captain begins struggling against you guys, and he gets his voice back. I pick him up and run. And he yells, Help! 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 These men are compelling me to follow them! Ah! And all hell breaks loose. The uh, guards that Jelly is reading to look up and notice him, uh, along wait, with no, the no, other no, guards. In episode four of season five, the mm-hmm. crossover episode with uh, the <laughs> hit show Wings. <laughs> and they see what's going on. Other guards run and they rush toward the edge of the encampment and they see their captain struggling against you guys. They will currently see me, like him on my shoulder and running. So uh, you need to do a strength contest with him. The captain rolls an 18. You rolled a 24. You do manage to pick him up. He is slung over your back. He's still screaming, help, help, help. The soldiers see him. They see Cohen running and Jelly is still stuck inside the encampment. Where are you, Skunk? Are you running with Cohen? Yeah, I'm running with Cohen, but I'm not as fast as Cohen, probably. But he's trying to pick up this guy, so... Well, Cohen's carrying someone, so he's going to be encumbered. Yeah. So a total of seven guards arrive immediately. From outside of the big tent? These were the ones who did not go to drink. Okay. There are five big tents. Yeah. There were, like, several tents all around. Just going to say, I hate to say it, but this is intense. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Seriously, fuck you. Look, I had to throw that in no you Come didn't on. no you didn't it's called self-control <laughs> <laughs> and uh so these seven guards five of them stop right at the uh, edge they whip out their bows and two of them rush out to skunk and cohen but not alone they've got a big old beast with them they've got what Appears to be a bear, but with an owl head. It's an owl bear. Ah! Why don't they call it a bear owl? Because it's a bear that's like an owl, not an owl that's like a bear. It's more bear than owl. It's more machine than man. And it, it's it's not a naked owl, so it's not a bear owl. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you see this bear, this owl bear going... <laughs> It looks very angry and vicious. As it screams, I also scream at it. Oh, what do you what do you scream at it? Uh, just (laughs) in fear. (laughs) That just upsets it even more. He goes. <laughs> um, can I cast animal friendship on it? In a bit, because we still need to roll initiative. The first thing that happens is a soldier lets fly a bow uh, let's fly an arrow he throws his bow <laughs> he just he throws <laughs> he his bow at us chucks his bow at you and he's like god 
dang it, damn it. And he throws his hat down and steps on it. God damn it, Jerry. Why are you, this is no, why you're still he, private. He, he, he fires an arrow and it hits the captain on the shoulder. Oh, oh. wow. And the captain, not dead, but injured, looks up and says, what the hell? And the soldier yells out, sorry, captain. <laughs> We can't let you talk. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. And so they're not trying to kill you immediately. They're trying to kill your hostage. The bear gets the first go. How far away is it from us? All right. Bear with me. Okay. God <laughs> fucking damn it. You guys are about 20 feet away from the main entrance of the camp. That's where the archers are. There's five of the archers, two guys running up with you with the owl bear. The owl bear is actually moving faster than them. And the owl bear manages to reach you because he, the owl bear is quite fast. The bowel is fast. The bowel air. That's disgusting. And since Cohen is carrying the captain, the owl bear attacks Cohen. He manages to miss you with his beak, but then hits you with his claws and gets you for 11 damage. So he uh, scrapes his claws against your mail. At first, it's kind of a pleasing sensation. Like it's, he's scratching you. Like that little, you know, the feeling you get when someone's scratching your back and it's like, ooh. But then it starts getting a little too deep. And uh, and then it rends my flesh. Yes, it rends your flesh. And blood blood does start to, uh, to form from the scraping. And it, it scrapes along my bone. It ceases to be pleasurable at that point. I, only at the point where it reaches bone, though. Really. Unless you're into that. You know, but I'm not going to make that assumption. Cohen howls in pain. <laughs> Stan, does, uh, does Cohen get hit in the love handle? <laughs> no, this, this was straight in the chest handle or the love chest. Since he's running up behind me, can we make it my back? Oh, yes. That, that makes even more sense. <laughs> Unless he reach, he did a reach around. Because you get that, you get that back I'm scratching cool sensation that. as he's literally scratching your back. That makes sense. Yeah. When you uh, attack him, say, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to know how Leo felt in The Revenant, guys. <laughs> it wasn't good. You could win an Oscar for this. I could. Yeah. So next up is Scump. Um, I am going to use on this owl bear animal friendship. It convinces it that I mean it no harm. If it doesn't pass a DC 14 wisdom saving throw. Uh, I think it passed. He rolled a 24. Oh, boy. <laughs> it is wise. So you cast Animal Friendship on him. It fails. And he looks at you. And he lifts a paw and lowers the left and right claw, leaving only the middle claw <laughs> in your face. Rude. Okay. I'm just trying to be friendly. <laughs> and it goes... <laughs> okay, jeez. <laughs> no need to take it personally. Next is Cohen. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to attack this creature. No, it's nice. What are you going to do with the captain? He's still over your shoulder. Well, I have, I have a long sword, so I can still attack with my other hand. He scratched my back. I'm going to have to scratch him back. I'll be using Divine Smite. As well as casting a spell nice. known as Wrathful Smite. So I'm going to put all my might into this attack. Oh, your divine smite, baby. You hit it. You rolled oh, a 14 boy. and you hit it. Yeah, boy. Okay, so divine smite comes down from heaven or wherever the hell Bast likes to hang out. Kitty heaven. Kitty heaven. Across the rainbow bridge. All kitties go to heaven. I do 28 damage to Mr. Owlbear. Mm. Also, he must make a wisdom saving throw or be frightened until the spell ends. He is frightened. He rolled a nine. He is most definitely frightened. So when you bring your sword down, like before, you know, when you when you first use it on the spider, it was just a divine smite and it was a claw of a, of a kitty that you saw. This time your sword, uh, your sword glows as you cast this a bright golden color. And as you bring it down, you see those claws form again, only larger and kind of more solidified uh, rather than ethereal and it slashes the fuck out of this owl bear it has got like claw marks going down and it bleeds Aww. and its eyes get really wide and it goes Whoa! and it turns nice. and runs away before it turns a ghost cat just appears beside its ear and whispers meow 
And it tears off into the camp. Can it be like throwing soldiers aside as it goes? Like well, it, <laughs> knock, knocking them, knocking them everywhere. We'll get to that when it's the soldiers' turn. That would look totally rad. I don't like but that. it did. It did knock the two soldiers that it came with prone. There and, and prone in D and D means just they fell on their back, even though that's not what prone means in reality. Roasted. Ah. Anyway, he knocks them on their back as he uh, as he runs back into the camp. Do you have any other D&D semantics you want to uh, take to task? To air? I will when we get there, <laughs> maybe. So... Listen, Gary Guy Gax, I got a problem with you. Well, he's dead. I, that's my biggest <laughs> I, problem with him. <laughs> yeah, what a loser. Stop picking on Ghost Stan. If he was really that great, why did he die? Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly right. Thank you very much, Ivan. Why didn't he pull a Jesus and resurrect on the third day with D&D 6th edition? Yeah, he could have done that. He's magic man. (laughs) Jelly, it's your turn. You're still at that tent where the the guards were standing, and now they have run towards the uh, entrance of the camp. So they're about 10 feet away from you, uh, and you are behind them. All right, and they're just kind of ignoring me. Yeah, they've got their uh, they've got their bows out. Well, Stanford, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast a little thing called Fog Cloud, and it's going to be focused on the area where Cone and Skunk are. Any melee attacks within the Fog Cloud are, are going to have disadvantage, but any attacks against anyone inside the Fog Cloud will have disadvantage. Uh, that's actually really good for protecting the captain. Yeah. And Cohen, for that matter. And me. Whatever. And you. Yeah, you don't count. So next up, then, is the soldiers. Stan, one thing I want to say. After I cast Fog Cloud, right. I reach into my bag and I pull out my scoot buddy. And I get ready to zoom off on the thing on my next turn. <laughs> right on. The first guard fires his arrow and and not only uh, misses, but somehow shoots his toe <laughs> because he had a critical miss. <laughs> God damn it, Jerry. He just casually aims down at the ground and shoots himself in the foot. He like he prepares his bow while it's aiming down and then fires it accidentally uh, because he's so shocked by all the uh, fog. He's like, whoa, what's that? Ow, fuck me! I was thinking that like he, he like looked to his friends and was like, hey, check this rad shit out. And <laughs> fired it up in the air. Like it was going to go down and hit, uh, hit the captain. And it just comes down on his foot. That's better. We'll go with that. I love that. So the next one misses completely. The next one manages to hit its target, the captain. Do they realize that if they kill us, then they yeah. don't have to kill the captain? <laughs> That's a decent point. I don't think they realize this. Jody, we've established at this point that these guards aren't very smart. I, th- I think they just really, really want to kill the captain. And they, they were like, oh, what's an excuse? Hey, they've got the captain. Quick, we can kill him now. <laughs> I don't think you realize how weak these dudes are. <laughs> so he does three damage to the uh, captain. This arrow does a wide arc in the air and lands in the captain's butt. <laughs> and you feel the captain moan into your chest. I whisper to the captain, man, your soldiers really don't like you. Would you like me to get some vengeance on them? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the third one. Fourth one misses. Uh, the arrows just fly out. Fifth one flies out. The two that are near you, uh, one gets up and swings wildly and not only misses, but hits his friend. <laughs> what are, are they like Benny Hill gods? <laughs> <laughs> They're like the Three Stooges. The Marx Brothers infiltrated the, uh, the Royal Guard and it just fucking shit up. And he does six damage to his buddy. <laughs> Are they just all fighting amongst each other now? He just, he, just has, he tries to attack you, but he's just swinging wildly and, and slices at the dude's chest. There's a lot of discord <laughs> among these guards. Internal power politics taking place. <laughs> that that guard, after being hit by his uh, his buddy, gets a swing out towards uh, Cohen and misses. There we have it. That's the uh, soldiers. And suddenly you hear a lady shout, Don't let him kill the captain. Protect him at all costs. And you see Courtney rush in with a quarterstaff. Oh, she's a monk. Oh, no. She... Oh, damn it. She's not a monk. She's Aww. a monkey. She's a cleric. So she comes in and casts 
shield of faith on Cohen, and what the fuck does that do? <laughs> it gives me a faithful shield. Oh. I'm going to call him Old Faithful. Uh, so she casts Shield of Faith, and Cohen, you see surrounding you a shimmering field. Oh, Old Faithful. <laughs> it's just masturbating furiously with this shield what it grants you plus two bonus to your ac (laughs) (laughs) one of these things is not like the other one i don't understand where that joke comes from it comes from damn it never i'm not going to explain it to you Thanks. And additionally, she casts a healing word on you, Cohen. You get a whopping 10 hit points restored to you, Cohen. That's not bad at all. Then she uh, plants herself with her quarterstaff, uh, ready to take on the other guards. And as this happens, you notice the clouds start to cover the sun, casting a gray pall over the world. Next up is the owl bear. God damn it, Paul. Get off our world. <laughs> Just a big Polly Shore. Yeah, a big Polly Shore appears in the sky and eclipses the sun. <laughs> The owl bear rolled a 15. Does that break the fear? It certainly does. The owl bear reaches to the area where Jelly and Courtney are and breaks the fear. It's like, Arr! I mean, Arr! thanks a lot, Cohen. You're welcome. <laughs> and now it is Skump's turn. Um, I'm going to cast Speak with Animals. God damn it. Um, <laughs> and yell, uh, Owl bear, don't let these humans get you down. You can do anything you want in life. <laughs> you should go on the motivational speaking circuit, skunk. Everyone else hears, <laughs> but what you hear is, I know, but what I want to do is eat all these people. You should eat the guards instead. Their humans taste pretty good. And you hear, <laughs> which means, really? Yeah. I I had one earlier. It was so filling. <laughs> and the owl bear responds, which means raw. Yeah, it's really good. You should try it seriously. <laughs> which means okay. Uh, next up is jelly. Here's what I do then. Uh, it's my turn. Are you ready to say hello mm-hmm. to our old friend, Scorch and Ray Romano? Oh, nice. yeah! Yes. All right. I cast Scorch and Ray Romano. Okay. Uh, so I'll just center on one that shot himself and then two others beside him, I guess. Okay. Here we go, baby. One Scorch and Ray Romano, two Scorch and Ray Romano, three Scorch and Ray Romanos. You got uh, one, two, three hits. All three of your set. Sweet. All right, so we're going with uh, 17, a 23, and a 20. We need to hear what sick burns your Scorching Rays do to the guys. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, with your great Ray Romano impression. I still need to look up... Uh, who Ray Romano is, um, <laughs> or what he looks like, or does. You've seen Ice Age, right? Yes. He was the elephant in Ice Age. Yeah, he's, he's the, mammoth the mammoth in Ice Age. Okay, Ice Age. that's my yeah. cultural there frame of reference for Ray Romano. <laughs> Do some of those sick Ice Age burns. Ray Romano wife, Ray Romano kids, Ray Romano brother, Ray Romano 2016. What? I'd vote for him. This is not my... This is not my beautiful Ray Romano house. This is not my beautiful Ray Romano wife. How did I get here? Why is Ray Romano impression David Byrne? Because <laughs> David Byrne and Ray Romano are basically the same person, right? Because he's a, he's giving sick David Burns. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Our scorching Ray Romano. And there's our episode out title: sick David Burns. David Burns. <laughs> Yeah, because David oh, Byrne no. is known for his uh, his zingers <laughs> and his <laughs> wild and crazy attitude. <laughs> okay, uh, this is canon now, all right? My Scorching Ray Romano is what happens is I wave my hands and Ray Romano heads shoot out and then they open up their mouths <laughs> and flaming David Byrne heads <laughs> shoot out of those heads. Not f- not flaming <laughs> lips. That would be yes. a different thing. And the David Byrne's lips look like the band The Flaming oh, Lips. <laughs> okay, I think we're getting a little too yeah, weird there. a little there. bit meta. I love it. Remember uh, when I we it. said at the beginning that we would try not to do pop culture references as the jokes? 
I'm never quitting. I'm never quitting. Well, actually, we didn't. Uh, we just failed. We. I was gonna say we've succeeded in not making the jokes, just saying the lyrics of songs, but we failed at that. In the too. first episode, I think we referenced yeah. Queen or something, so we failed significantly. All right. Uh, so. How much damage do these fucking heads do? Okay, here's how it goes. One Ray Romano head shoots out to the uh, to the guy with the injured foot All right. and says, You can't shoot for shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and another one shoots out to the guy next to him and says, You still let your mom file your taxes for you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, that was categorically less damage, so the burn wasn't as bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and this one says, I've heard that you steal library books. <laughs> 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 oh, sick David Burns, man. All right, so none of them uh, murder any of these guards, but the uh, first one gets set a little bit on fire, and he's uh, dusting himself off, screaming, going, ah! The other one next to him got his shoe lit on fire, but was able to stamp it out a bit, but burned his foot. Most of the damage came from him stamping on his own foot. Exactly. And the other one got his uh, tunic on fire and quickly tore it off. So... That's what happened with those three people that you got with their Scorching Ray Romanos. Also... So do we have a naked guard now? Just as importantly, though, all three of them got their feelings. That's what you get when you tangle with Ray Romano. Why does Ray Romano go, Hey, it's me, Ray Romano. (laughs) Stan, clearly, Stan, you have never watched Everyone Loves I don't remember him going, It was his What You Talking About, Willis. It was uh, (laughs) iconic. Okay. Everybody loves (laughs) me. That was the alternate. That was the title of the spinoff they tried to make. Next up is The Soldiers. What a shitty podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, come on. You mean the best podcast ever? There'd be some good goofs in this podcast. We need to... We need to make a jokes good because the Dames and Dragons people might be listening and we want to impress them. (laughs) We need to class up the joint. (laughs) It's a bit late for that, guys. (laughs) Yeah. I really shouldn't have recorded this in my underpants. (laughs) It puts you in a certain mindset. (laughs) It it does. It really does. (laughs) Oh, my God. We were terrible people. So... We got two hits from the arrow people. On who? Uh, to the captain. Can I jump in front of the arrows and take it for the captain? <laughs> no, but you can you can prepare for that next time, though. The captain takes 11 damage. Two arrows land, one in each calf. And you feel his legs shake behind you, Cohen, as he uh, screams some more. <laughs> Except it's muffled. It's into your chest, so it's... <laughs> I say, hang in there, little buddy. We got gotcha. you. It's it's just your it's just your calves. You 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 don't need them that much. And then the the two the two cards that are inside the fog cloud with you uh, swing. I'm actually using the captain as a shield at this stage. <laughs> Oh, are you going to use them as a shield? No. Both of them miss you. Uh, or actually, one of them hits you, but it doesn't hurt. It just kind of clangs against your uh, mail, and, and you don't take any damage from it. You kind of look at where it hits you, and you're like, all right, good armor. Except in a Cohen <laughs> way. I kiss my armor. Okay. Good armor. <laughs> Every time Cohen looks down at himself, he always thinks that. All right, <laughs> armor still going strong. Yeah. He likes to kiss his armor. Still got armor on. Yep, it's still there. And Courtney runs up to uh, one of the uh, soldiers with the arrows and swings her quarter staff, and she gets a critical t- hit. And she manages to uh, crack this dude's head open, and he falls down. It was the uh, center bowman, so one of them is now down. After she attacks. You do notice that the sky is completely covered in gray and white clouds and getting darker. Where's Paul gone? Paul is still there. He's just grayer than even even grayer than before. Next up is the bear. The bear takes Skumsk advice. You're <laughs> you're a great and attacks Courtney. Oh. oh. Well, oh. she's too sinewy. <laughs> <laughs> Take one of these big guys. And let's see, the bear gets a plus seven to hit. Oh, jeez. Thanks, Gump. 
Thanks a lot. Well, actually, at least it protected Jelly. All right, and the bear hits twice. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. I'm glad you're standing up for yourself, but this really doesn't align with my goals. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to become your own independent person, but the kind of independent person that listens to what I say. I mean, yeah, I don't want to be manipulative to you. I want to be on the level with you, but I think we could have a compound interest here, and uh, don't don't eat her. Really make it a choice of case. Yeah, really. So she takes 19 damage. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man, she got revenanted. And the owlbear bites at her, and she takes it on a, on her wrist and gets a little bit of her you know armor scratching at her. But then the bear hits her with the claws, and that knocks her back real bad. And she's sitting down there bleeding, uh, looking in really bad shape. Next up is Skunk. Can I roll perse- uh, Persuasion? Boom. I rolled a 17. To persuade the... Uh, the owl bear that in the future, don't do that. Okay, yeah, all those <laughs> things that you said. And the owl bear goes... <laughs> which means, but you said to go after the humans. She is a human. She was right next to me. I mean... And I'm really hungry. I mean, yeah, that's reasonable. I should have been more clear. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm... I'm that's all I can say, really. I apologize, and I should have communicated with you more clearly. I shouldn't have talked down to you. I think that, uh, I, I think that, uh, I, I was wrong. And, uh, just don't, don't eat Courtney. Eat those guards. <laughs> Which means... <laughs> That's the first time anyone really ever treated me with respect and gave me a great apology. (laughs) (laughs) This is bullshit. This is awesome. Um, I'm going to cast Entangle on some of these guards. Okay. Um... (laughs) I, I also I give the owl bear like a thumbs up. <laughs> You're a good guy. Um, entangle uh, twenty oh foot square. God. They have to succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained. Where are you centering it? Is there a way that I can center it without hitting the owl bear or jelly or Courtney or Courtney? Uh, yeah, you could uh, center it in the center between you and them. Yeah, sounds good. In that whole twenty foot area. So that would get all of the guards. You get all the guards that way. All right, that's what I'll do. They have to beat fourteen. They roll a five. Hey. So far, your entangle has like worked every single time. It's all I can do. <laughs> so all the guards are now completely entangled inside these these little vines that, that sprout out of the ground and just clench into them like tendrils. Look, they're they're held still. Now you can eat as many as you want. And she says, which means going to be some good eating tonight. Next up is <laughs> Cohen. I'm going to kill the guard that's in front of me with my killing sword. <laughs> this is my killing sword, boy. You hit the guard. This is my killing sword. This is my butter spreading sword. This is my laundry folding sword. <laughs> I don't want to get I don't want to get my killing sword mixed up with my butter spreading sword. Your killing sword with an 11 kills the guard. <laughs> yeah. You just take your killing sword, you you swing it and well actually let me ask, is this a lethal blow? Yeah. Your killing sword uh, swings. You just swing it recklessly, and it cuts the sword. It cuts the sword. <laughs> it cuts uh, his cuts sword the, in half. It cuts the soldier at the belly, and his bowels start spilling out slowly. And I said, that's for attacking, attacking my captain friend. Attacking. Attacking. <laughs> And he's like, but I was attacking you. He holds up his hand and says, well, actually. (laughs) (laughs) And I just killed an MRA dude. (laughs) And the world is a better place. Um, place. Just a reminder, uh, Jelly and Scump still look like human men. Ugh. Human men. Yeah, human Human. men. I hate this. Next up is the soldiers. All right, so we got four hits on the captain. The captain is looking bad. 
got four arrows in his back and he no longer can even shout he's just bleeding on your chest through his mouth cohen i pat him on the back and like discover it's full of arrows and go Oop, that, was, <laughs> that was a bad idea <laughs> next up is jelly here's what i do i reach into my bag and i pull out my sunglasses and i put them on <laughs> and i make a finger gun real I cool a finger gun and i pointed at the healthiest looking guard and i shoot the finger gun in a beam of crackling blue energy shoots out and hits him well actually let's see if it hits him 12 does 12 hit what the fuck? jesus <laughs> no God. it doesn't hit at all so i shoot the finger gun crackling a beam of blue energy shoots out and totally misses him <laughs> it just <laughs> you looked and cool say, you got lucky today punk <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to blow the smoke off the end of your finger. I, I do that. I blow the smoke off the end of my finger. Next up is Courtney, and she is she's hurting real bad, guys. I say, bear with it, Courtney. No, you do I'll, not. I'll bear <laughs> with it. She casts. No, you don't. Shut up. She casts prayer of healing. Incredible. So all of you gain fourteen uh, hit points back plus Courtney. We, we gain Courtney back. Uh, well, yeah, Courtney's uh, Courtney just healed herself and. Five creatures of her choice. I was messing with your grammatical structure. Don't worry. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Grammar is important. Grammar is very important, Stan. (laughs) (laughs) And Courtney stands up and she goes, I'm ready to roll. (laughs) Is she like a Pokemon character? (laughs) I feel like that's inconsistent with the character. That's just her getting really excited, you know, Charizard, that she's healthy I again. You. She'll switch back to her normal voice. Did I already do my update to the weather? Nope. No, you got to do your weather update now. And here's Stan with the weather. We got to find out what what's Paul doing now. The weather what's report. It? Somebody switches on the radio. It begins to rain, and you've noticed the temperature has gone up. So bring your umbrellas and put on a heavy oh. jacket. So is it getting really humid now? Because it's starting to get humid. Yeah. Oh, it's that I'm kind of rain. I'm definitely sweating. Like Cohen's getting some mad pits going on right now. <laughs> Skunk is into it. He like rubs the rain on his body. <laughs> this is bad for Jelly because she has really curly hair. So it's just frizzing out like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you have a hat or anything? <laughs> Newspaper. This is this is good weather weather for finding worms. <laughs> Next up is the owl bear. Get that guard. The owl bear turns to uh, skunk and winks. Gives a big exaggerated <laughs> wink. Like, oh yeah. Are we still in a fog cloud? Well, yeah, but she has really good vision because she's an owl bear. Oh, that makes she sense. She points at you and does a finger gun <laughs> with her claws. <laughs> And she chases after the injured one, the the first injured yes. guy, because she can smell his blood. Same. And, and attacks him. One hits. She reaches out with the beak and does... Holy shit. 15 damage. So what you see is this owl bear reaches out for the first injured bowman and just grabs him by the love handle in her beak. Flips him up in the air and just starts gnawing away at him like crazy. It's, it's like the Tasmanian devil eating. She's just tearing, you know, tearing him up into little bitty shreds. Oddly enough, she can't seem to hit him with her claws. <laughs> <laughs> But eventually he dies, and uh, she's Gross. she just spends the rest of her time there uh, eating his insides. Good job, Skunk. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's what Skunk did for you guys. You should thank him. Fuck you, Skunk. It is now Skump's turn. I'm going to run into the middle of the guards and cast Thunder Wave. Okay. Uh, I go, Gah! Right as a thunderbolt strikes in the background, just for dramatic effect. Which it does happen, given the weather. Yeah, and it makes a big, loud sound. Right, but it doesn't happen right as you go, Nah! You go, Nah! Expecting the thunderbolt, several seconds pass, you wait, you wait some more, you start running, figuring it's not going to happen. Then you you stop, because you hear something, but it's just the bear farting. (laughs) And you stop again, and then you hear the thunder, and then you run. I didn't realize that rounds were this long. You've wasted three (laughs) rounds of combat. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, they have, okay. I'll allow it. Uh, there's a, they have to beat a constitate, constitution, a constipation saving, saving throw. throw. All right, they're going to do that. <laughs> it's going to be done at a disadvantage too, since they're all in vines. Oh, before I do the spell, I yell to the owl bear. Ah, this is going to be loud. Just a warning. Don't be surprised when a loud noise happens. And that just means thanks for the heads up, bro. You're welcome. You did 11 damage, which secures the fact that that will kill them all. You run in there. You slam your... Well, what do you do to cause this? No, I just yell really loud. Oh, you yell really loud? He clenches his butt cheeks. Yeah. You see a wave of sound somehow just emanate from you. And you can tell that you see it because everything that comes in, it just kind of goes in this little wave format and as it hits each of the soldiers that are entangled you just see their bodies get crushed something just slammed into them causing significant trauma to their chests Ah. and they died they're they're all dead yeah that's unpleasant yeah it's a it's a mess but you just ate a guy so well and courtney yells out we won the day hooray good job courtney you did it (laughs) and uh you were the real hero the bear uh runs up to skunk and sticks its paw up for a high five yeah i high five it with gusto all right i high five it while giving it a thumbs up give her a bear hug it does that and then uh, shut the fuck up (laughs) and picks you up and gives you a hug (laughs) and uh ah i give it a a kiss on the beak and uh it goes it it looks at you one last time and goes and then uh runs happily away uh be free and that means i love you and you know she heads off as you guys regroup this is what you see because of the rain and the increased temperature the environment has is starting to become hazy on top of the fog that jelly had already cast and the weird thing is is even jelly's fog seems to be like being moved away as if it's being sucked away from where you're standing and this fog forms around the perimeter of where you guys were all fighting and it mixes in with the natural fog so now you're surrounded in a circle with this thick wall of fog around you like in a circle but where you're in there is no fog it is perfectly clear you can all see each other inside this ring of fog skunk does not seem to uh acknowledge this <laughs> so what do we do next guys next you actually well one of you jelly you notice behind skunk and cohen a tall thin silhouette approaching from the fog uh... the figure then enters into your field of view and you see a man approximately 10 feet in height a long black robe flowing around his body it's slender man isn't it <laughs> Around his head is a black cowl exposing his gaunt face with high cheekbones, a narrow chin, and thin, wispy mustache curled neatly at the edges of his lips. Charles Dance? And he smiles at you. (laughs) He smiles at you and says, So you're the men who freed me. Um, I do owe you a great debt. And woman. You don't look like a woman. You are in a man suit. It doesn't matter. I still say it. (laughs) Oh, okay. I am no man. Uh, You say that, and just before he says the next thing, his... He raises a single eyebrow like Spock would have done. Okay, I tear off my costume. (laughs) Perhaps one day I will repay you. He looks at the captain. He says, Oh, your friend here is hurt. You should see that he gets proper medical treatment. I certainly wouldn't want to be in your way. I have a wife who misses me. Guys, guys, No, we guys. should hang out. This is Gary Oldman's true form. He then walks towards the camp, and as he enters the, the camp, he's now in front of uh, Jelly and Courtney, and he stretches his arms outward, and the bodies of all the dead reanimate and walk toward him. He coyly looks at De- Jelly and says, I'm a firm believer in recycling, and I'm sure you'd agree I shouldn't travel alone. Who knows what dangers await me? He looks at you one last time and says, Pleasure. 
and bows his head slightly. Bye. He then proceeds to walk away with his undead cadre, and as he goes, the fog and clouds disappear completely. Who Do we the know that guy? Who was that? Is he that kid or uh, the captain of the well, boat? Well, guys, or... um, it's been fun adventuring with you, but I'm going home. I don't really remember what and humans look like. I get on my like. scoot buddy and I scoot away. Was he the prison warden? <laughs> No, he was not the prison warden. This is the first time you've ever seen this guy. No, I'm asking the party. <laughs> oh. I don't recall him from previous meetings. Seemed very strange. He seemed nice. I think I made a new friend today, guys. Yeah, I think we learned that the real magic is friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Courtney says, I totally agree with you. So, uh, do you guys need a ride? And she points towards her wagon. Yeah, we better get out of here. There could Shotgun. be more soldiers. She goes, yeah, that was pretty creepy shit. Hmm. Pra, yep, yep. I mean, I guess. We did fight giant spiders. I didn't think of it that way, but I now that you mention it. So she uh, <laughs> walks towards her wagon, opens the door for you guys, and says, hop on in. Is there any bottled water? Yeah, or sandwiches? Are there any sandwiches? Ooh, uh, no, no, no sandwiches or bottled water. Uh, uh, you know, all the beer was drunk. Uh, Courtney. Yeah, sorry, guys. Oh. What about yeast? Uh, but I think you'll like what's in there and yes <laughs> she lets you guys in and all three of you enter into oh, her little cabin on. i've got she, captain uh, gerbil face on my shoulders um should i just <laughs> is there somewhere i can dump him in. him in there just throw him in time there? to the fr- like, well there's the there's there's room for four you can have him seated inside time he's got a whole bunch of arrows in his back i don't think sit and and in his butt and in his calf Oh, um, she she goes, you know what? You are so right here. Let me take care of that. And she goes, I am a cleric. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. And she just tears all the just yanks all the arrows out of his body <laughs> and puts a little bandaid on top of each of the holes <laughs> and says, there we go. This is what I would have done if you guys had asked me. <laughs> Does he react? Is he unconscious? What's what's he say in all this? Oh, well, no, he's not unconscious because he gained 14 hit points also when she did the healing thing. And just as she pulls him out, he's like, oh, no. Oh. Courtney, you're a really good healer. She seems to be smiling and really enjoying this. All right. I chuck him in the wagon. Oh. I make sure I bump his head on the way through, sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so as you're inside... You, you do notice something kind of neat. Inside her wagon, you see a small store of supplies, and there's a watchwork gnome tending to it. And he asks, what can I do for you, boys? I got four delightful potions that you could uh, enjoy. First, we've got a potion of healing. Mm-hmm. Anyone could use a good potion of healing. Only 50 gold points, or gold pieces. <laughs> can we call them gold points from now on? Only 50 gold pieces. Uh, Additionally, (laughs) we've got a potion of pass without a trace. We've got this uh, potion of remove paralysis. Guess what it does? 300 gold pieces. It's a steal. And finally, my personal favorite, potion of spider climb. I can already climb like a spider do you have a, a potion of sandwiches no i'll take the uh, potion of spider climb all yours my friend and he tosses you a uh, scarlet ichor that causes shadows to appear darker kind when of used fumble with it and like uh, in midair for a while but then i catch it <laughs> <laughs> hello strange gnome person uh since you're selling i'll grab the pass without trace and the Parallelysis removing potions. One of, one of each. Excellent, excellent choices. And by the way, I'm not a real person. I'm a clockwork orange. <laughs> and <laughs> if you believe enough, little man, you will become a real boy. Just like uh, just like the movie AI. <laughs> <He's> a, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that is. And he just like a Pinocchio nought or something. He tosses you a brass draft contained in a spherical bottle. And on it is a hastily written label that says Potion of PWT. Then he hands you another one that's slightly larger, which is a sapphire elixir with an earthy smell. I obviously take the time to smell it. Delicious. (laughs) It says, 
porp on it. Mmm, porpoise. <laughs> gotta get, gotta get me some of that porp. That sweet, sweet porp. <laughs> porpoise is a delicacy among coastal goblins. So, uh, do you want to purchase anything, Skunk? On the level of capybara meat. <laughs> Many a night the goblins would go out hunting the uh, the capybara. Porpoise actually tastes a lot like capybara. Ah, speaking of capybara, is there anything you'd like to buy? Uh, no, I don't really need anything, but I'll give you money if you want. Like, I'm not doing anything. I don't want anything. I'm just a clockwork gnome. Oh, uh, don't be so modest. Oh. I give him a gold piece. <laughs> He takes it, he tosses it in the air, and catches it in the air, and puts it in his little clockwork pocket. I have a question, uh, little little clockwork gnome. Would you be interested in buying anything? Would I? I reach into my bag, and I pull out... No, I mean it. Would I? Uh, well, let's see. I reach into my bag and pull out a handful of uh, very moldy sandwiches. <laughs> and he looks at that and says, wow, what are those? Egg and tomato. I hold up one and say, this is a sandwich of greater healing this is a uh, sandwich of invisibility and uh this one is uh as a sandwich of uh of charm uh eat this sandwich and uh you will have advantage on all uh charisma checks did you say a sandwich of chum he says place those sandwiches here in front of me my friend is there any bug sandwiches left uh you took all those i didn't take any oh I probably ate them. Oh, but they probably have bugs in them by now. <laughs> <laughs> he he does ask, uh, place those sandwiches here in front of me, my friend. I place them in front of him. I say, actually, those look pretty good now. Can I have one of those? Uh, sure, I toss you one. <laughs> I got had an extra one. They're finely aged. Cohen falls asleep on the bench from boredom. I place <laughs> the sandwiches in front of him. <laughs> you place them in front of him. He looks at them and says, hmm, I think this fungus might be good for something. Ah, that gives me some ideas. I'm going to try it against some of these germs I have. And uh, he takes them and tosses them inside of a little bag. He goes, they don't do what you said they do, but I can think of some good scientific things to use them for. Here's 50 gold pieces. Ah, sweet. Did we just invent penicillin? (laughs) You guys didn't. Except <laughs> with a po- with potions of healing, penicillin has been made um, irrelevant. No, no, those are the, you'd have to have a potion for disease. Oh yeah, true. Which it does exist. Well, now will exist in this world because you allowed him to You're invent welcome. it. And until until the bacteria get immune to the penicillin, and then they'll have to come up with. Well, them. that's because people kept giving the penicillin to people who didn't need them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, anybody can drink potions. Okay, then we end is... up with magic superbugs. Mmm, <laughs> superbugs. <laughs> After all this, uh, you eventually notice the wagon has stopped moving or bouncing or whatever. Moving and bouncing. It doesn't yeah. move, it just bounces in place. <laughs> <laughs> it it's has big... like jacked up suspension yeah it's blasting they see me rolling as we go (laughs) yes yes roll credits courtney comes and opens the door up for you and says some shit that i wrote (laughs) i'm keeping that in the podcast they see me rolling (laughs) she opens the door for you and says i need to get going back Give Sarah a hug for me. Will do. She closes the door as you exit, and she starts to climb into the driver's seat again. And where are we? Bye, Courtney. You you are right outside the carriage. You are watching her as she climbs into the driver's seat. Do you wish to say anything to her? Or... I mean, where <laughs> where are we exactly? In the village, oh, or... you 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 are on the path to Sarah's. Oh, okay, okay. I was wondering. Cabin. It's like it's like right there. You can see it a little bit in the distance. She takes you to essentially what's the end of her long driveway. I say. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks for being a good Dusex Machina. Thank you for being a friend. We traveled up the, the road and back, back again. again. She smiles at you guys and winks and goes, You guys are the real pals. And I wasn't much of a Dusex Machina. She go, She looks at Skump and goes, He and his bear were. <laughs> the Deus Ex Machina was in you all along. <laughs> it was. We found our inner Deus Ex. <laughs> Deus Ex Goblin. <laughs> 
she pulls the reins and the and the uh the horses pull off her uh her wagon and she waves again and says bye bye don't forget that hug bye and you see yourself looking down the long driveway to sarah's house and you see uh sarah open up her door and she's looking I at you run guys to her and i give her a hug hi All right, you run to her and you give her a hug and she gives you a hug but it's kind of half-hearted oh no and as you pull away you see she has a concerned look on her face she says i say that was from uh courtney you didn't tell me you met courtney oh uh we met courtney yeah it was a thing that happened we also met a uh a spooky fog man girls dance and we met a bear and courtney poisoned all the guards with a bird head oh and i've got captain gerbil face right here and we met some goblins she looks at that and she smiles uh slightly and she's like she pulls her uh bottom lip back and and bites it a little bit and she says hmm let me tell you about courtney oh we met a weird old man who runs a brothel his name is gary oldman i think we should uh i think the organization should keep an eye on him i don't think that's his name but i know who you're talking about but really, I need to tell you about Courtney real quick. And I think a lady who runs a fruit stand. <laughs> We're just going to list out every NPC we interacted with. Okay, well, we met a clock gnome. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was cool. There was a giant talking weird guy in a black coat. Met a fellow very full houser. Mm-hmm. Met a bunch of guards. Uh-huh. They're not guards anymore. Uh-huh. I want to hear about the guy in the black coat, but let me just tell you something real quick. Courtney was a member of the Blazing Dusk. I, I take it you know this already, right? Oh, yeah, the delivery service. Yes, she showed us Yeah, a coin thing had the logo on it. By the yeah. way, can we get some of those? Yeah, we need them. I'll get you some, but she she's not guided by ideals. She's guided by hatred, and we didn't really feel comfortable with how far she was willing to go. I mean, I guess it's good to see she's still an ally, but... Um, be careful with her what did she do uh she's just really just into some heinous shit um aren't we all brother i was about to say we ate a guy so <laughs> well she has no idea what you guys did <laughs> she turns to the captain and says let's get you fixed up and she has you bring him in and she points to the bed and asks you to, to lay him on there mm-hmm I do what she asks. But as soon as you lay him on the bed, she then takes some rope and restrains his arms and legs onto the bed and begins uh, tending to his wounds. Is this that kind of party? (laughs) I leave the room. (laughs) She then turns to you and says, let's all get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Hello, this is Stan. Hello, this is Trevor. Uh, hi, this is Jody. I think the hi may have been redundant. Hi, everybody. It's me, Ivan, your best friend. And dungeon master. Your best friend and personal trainer. No, we're not stealing that bit. We already we already <laughs> stole the show idea. I wasn't even thinking about that. That's actually a thing that I say in real life. <laughs> Oh, so Griffin stole it from you. Anyway. Yeah. We want to tell you about a couple cool things, a podcast and a YouTube channel who are people who listen to our show and are awesome and hang out at our Facebook group. We put a call out to our our listeners for some cross-promotional activities and we have some, so Mm -hmm. we're going to promote other people's stuff. Yeah, get it into you. Join our They See Me Rolling Facebook group. If you have anything that you'd like us to give shout outs to at the end of the show, we're happy to do it. First, First off is a cool podcast, and you tell us all about it, Trevor. I've actually been on it. Yeah, I love it. Ooh. It's called Random Sampling. Uh, Random Sampling is a weekly podcast where hosts Carrie Nelson and Jesse Cooper choose conversation randomly from articles on Wikipedia. Recent topics have included cryptids, the Great Emu War, Baby Kings. Every week, Carrie Butcher's Swedish Jerry... Jerry? Jerry Seinfeld is on it. Shut the fuck up. Every week, Carrie Butcher's Swedish, uh, Jesse Butcher's English, and there's always time to talk about Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, just like... <laughs> Yep. Butchered it. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you can find the show on iTunes and other providers of fine podcasts. And if you send interesting or weird Wikipedia articles to at underscore RSPod on Twitter, they'll talk about them on the show. Right yeah, on. I was on there. I what, what episode were you on? What did they talk about? I forget which title it was, but I talked mostly about uh, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, queer core bands, and this uh, cool bisexual opera singer slash fencing master from the 1800s. Nice. Very cool. That's just what I talk about. 
about in real life. Same. <laughs> That's all Ivan talks about. That's why I hate talking to him. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I hate listening to myself. Awesome. Fantastic. Random Sampling is a great podcast. Uh, and Jesse Cooper is a great guy. Also check out their uh, podcast. that we, We've already talked about it before and we've been on it. But uh, definitely check out Turn to Page. Uh, I, additionally, we want to talk about a YouTube channel of a friend of ours, uh, Jody. Yeah, it's a pretty cool channel. It's called Let's Code Physics, in which our friend Brian Lane describes how to code physics it's um it's very very intelligent smart stuff that i'll have to admit i don't 100 percent understand but i'm really glad it exists and if you're learning learning physics or learning uh electronics or electrical engineering it would be super useful for you i can see how that would be it, it's also great just you know for developing uh physics uh code into a video game uh, or even uh, you know a graphical presentation if you really want to go really into it, but it is definitely uh, catered towards um, developers who need to utilize physics in their programs. So we're talking yeah. pretty advanced stuff. And uh, Brian Lane is really good at this. He he is a physics professor, so he's Mister Badass. So definitely check it out. What we're saying is he has a super. He smart does have brain. a super smart brain. Why he's listening to us is anyone's guess. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brian. You're a legend. <laughs> All right. So, should we end this or talk about Twitter or something or what? Ivan, why don't you talk about our Twitter? Hey, everybody. It's me, <laughs> Ivan. What's the deal with Twitter? <laughs> Let him keep going. This is awesome. Well, uh, the the president, huh? He's on Twitter. Um, Shut up! I swear to God, <laughs> that stresses me out. Uh, if you don't want to read that Twitter feed, you can instead read our Twitter feed, uh, <laughs> which is curated by Martin. You mean Trevor? Um, at at TSMRcast, I think it is. Okay, at TSMRcast. If you're Australian, you say cast. If you're American, you say cast. It's spelled the same, though. It's spelled exactly the same. It's amazing. Well, thanks for listening to us. It's such a coincidence. <laughs> That's called a cognate. This has been our podcast, Accent Explaining. Let's code accents. <laughs> All right. I'm tired. We should end this yes, shit. Yes, we totally should. Thank you, guys. <laughs> right, it's been two hours. <laughs> Bye. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs>